103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are recording this on Sunday, August 15th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Whoop, 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 whoop. Winnebago. And hello. Our guests today are George Brown, two and a half, the second and a half, Brooklyn. How are you? I'm okay. And Dread Pirate Higgs. Ahoy Welcome. there. And the uh, John Richards, all the way from England. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Dread Pirate Higgs is joining us from Canada. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. What's our topic today there, Wombat? We might actually be going through every single one of those topics you just mentioned, but today we're talking about absolute power corrupts absolutely and why monotheism should share the wealth, right? We'll be talking about polyism versus monotheism. It's going to be a great Uh time. But, but let's slow down, Tyrone. Tyrone, everybody, we all got to <laughs> relax because we can't begin because our own best friend, Dread Pirate Higgs, is here. And I'd love for him to lead us in our weekly invocation. It's been so long. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, hallowed be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog, whenever and ever. You know, I was playing disc golf with a friend of mine. He's a Christian friend. He's the same friend who believed that God was personally talking to him. And we had some SE conversations about that. But uh, what was interesting was I invited him out to play disc golf with us on Saturday. And he's like, you really like this disc golf thing? It's like, yeah, make it like a regular thing. And I have a bunch of other friends with us. We had a couple of other guys who were with us too. But you meet people, you have fun outside. And it's like a regular basis where you can like increase your social, you know, uh, circle without having to necessarily be, have it be related to work. And I was like thinking to myself, it's like this outdoor thing that I'm doing or this thing that I'm going outside is almost like its own little church. And I was like, it's kind of like, you know, its own get together without the dogma. And he thought about that for a long time. He was like, yeah, there's a, there's a value in there. Like, even as a Christian, he was like, I can appreciate the fact that just getting out on a regular basis with a group of friends touching mm-hmm. bases and having some fun outdoors. It was like, yeah, you and don't so really need the church for it. Yeah, it's hot humans do. We're a social creature. We like to get together and just commune as yeah. it were. So Larry, tell me how you've been communing. Oh, mainly on Facebook, I guess. Um, Barley doing Zoom meetings. Rooms, right? Huh? Didn't you go didn't you go to Barley Staps and Rooms not too long ago? Well, I don't. I well I did about a month ago, but I don't usually go because I'm I'm doing the Zoom meeting at the same uh-huh. time at home. Oh, so okay, um, okay. people can join us on the Zoom meeting every Tuesday at six o'clock where they can go down to Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville's old city, join us down there from about five thirty to eight. Nice. So uh Two ways to get together. Cool. For cool. the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Very nice. Speaking of get together, Dread Pirate Higgs, it's been a while since we had a chance to get together. I'm glad there's no singe marks on you. How you been? And you're muted. He's muted. It's all right. <laughs> he, he, we'll figure it out. Oh, that was strange. Can't not hear you. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing good. I was... Uh, I was up for a couple of weeks at um, this one place where we were having some wildfires, I, I mentioned, and I was uh, deployed again to another place. It was 63 kilometers up a forest service road. And uh, uh, during my first shift um, towards the end of the day, the wind had picked up so quickly that uh, we were told to get out and stay out wow, <laughs> so, wow, really? so i got i got off early i was supposed to be up there for two weeks um but uh i'm actually being redeployed again on the 19th to go to 100 mile house to and that's where they actually have the major staging 
uh, for all the wildfires in, in BC interior. So it'll be quite cool. Do you guys, wow. this is a silly question, but do you guys use dust, water, or controlled fires to control the fires? A mixture of all three? Like Yeah, salt? there's uh, yeah, there's the retardant and water. Okay. Jeez, jeez. Yeah. And prayer. And prayer. No prayer. <laughs> Surprisingly, no prayer in that list. Yeah, yeah. That's the most effective part of the whole uh, yeah. thing. To, to our noodly Lord. Yeah, there, that's right. So it is a silly thing. This is the silliest thing that I'm going to bring up. But there is an anime that's out that has a fire department that has a priest on the team. And the priest prays to put out fires. And that in the, in the anime world, that's just as effective as the water. And it, and it only struck me now that it's like, Wait a second, that shouldn't work in real life. <laughs> Only right now did I start thinking about that. Anyway, yeah. no, I've, I have heard and I've learned that um, Christian Science uh, yeah. will actually pay pr um, priests uh, insurance uh, money to pray for the recovery of their sick and infirm. Wow. Wow. I want to be on that list. Okay. John Richards, you're looking a little distracted. I see you looking down. You're, you're rooting. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on in the world? I'm making notes. <laughs> no, no, no. Tell me what's going on in the world of sports. That, this is what's going on in the world with me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I do Zoom commune, the new thing, of course. Yep. Zoom and uh, uh, yeah. And I'm currently keeping tabs on the India versus there you go. England cricket match, which yeah. is the second of the series of test matches. And it's very tightly balanced at the moment. How many, touchdowns, only in, how many touchdowns are we in so far? It's only in the third day. So <laughs> we're a long way from an outcome. So they play and, multiple days, I imagine, when you say they're and, in their And they've day. just gone to tea. <laughs> okay, they just gone to tea. They both take their tea breaks very seriously. That is true. Uh, but I, I was going to pick up on um, Larry said we're social animals, and we are indeed. And sometimes this works to our disadvantage. I mean, one of my daughters wanted a pet, so we agreed. Her mother and I agreed that she should have a bird, budgerigar, you know. Okay. And so I went to my mother. The, the mother organised it, and I went to collect these things, and I discovered that she'd ordered two. So we now have a separate society of two birds who know their birds and have their own little society, and humans who know their humans, <laughs> and we don't socialise very much. So my contention is that if you have a pet, you should have one pet. And oh, then, this is then it's got it's got to socialise with you. It thinks ah. you're part of, part of its social hey. group. There's some strategy behind that because I have been thinking about getting a second cat, but then I'm like, then he won't be my best friend anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Funny story. My brother used to have a bird that he learned to say a lot of things, uh, human speech, you know. But then uh, after having him several years, he got another bird. And then the bird just stopped talking humans yes. and yes. just started talking bird. And that was it. He, never he did. just started talking Talk. birds. Yep. Yes. He was like, chirp, chirp, beep, beep. Yep. <laughs> that was it. No more, no more parroting. There you go. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's a good one. George Brown, how you been? It's good to see you. Well, I've been, I've been uh, two things going on. One is uh, I've been struggling with computers hmm. and uh, you know, I live in the world of Unix, uh, Linux, and um, Linux is like a Wild West show. Yes. Uh, everything goes, it's the Tower of Babel. And you never know if anything's going to work or not. That's the world I live in. I came from the world of Windows, which is some like... Um, You're lucky if it works, and if it doesn't, there's nothing you can do about it, basically. Which way well, it's... Right? But then there's, you see, Windows is like uh, a constitutional monarchy. Okay. Okay, there's a titular boss. Sure. And then there's the world of the Macintosh. And it has been said that Mussolini made the trains run on time. So I have more and more friends who are moving to the Macintosh because they're just totally fed up with the inconsistencies of Windows, you including... Can, you can including totally switch to Apple and it'll all computer. work. Just remember to ask for the bar tag to be put right here on your neck when you get put into the system. I know you'll love that, okay? And then the the other thing that's going Damn, on, that's harsh. Just saying. Am I am I safe going to the grocery store now? Hmm. 
you know, with the pandemic and the stat, with the current status of the pandemic, yeah. which almost seems to change every day yeah. in terms of recommendations about what we are supposed to do. I would think so, as long as you're vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, well, so welcome, on, Nathan. Welcome, That's Nathan. becoming a little bit questionable as well. Well, it definitely hurts to never, it hurt, doesn't hurt to wash your hands. It doesn't hurt to be around someone that's coughing in your face. Like avoiding that is also a good thing. Uh, I think the basic recommendations have been consistent. Maintain good hygiene and stay away from sick people. If you're sick, stay home if you can. And uh, if, you, if there's a disease out that's killing lots of people, get vaccinated for the disease if we have it. But Not many about- variations on it. If I want to pick up some some groceries at Walmart, pick up some groceries and wash your hands when you get home. I think you'll be all right. And if you can wear a mask, wear a mask. Take a shower and sanitize the car. I wouldn't be the one to tell you to take a shower, but if I could smell you, I'd say you smell like roses, George. You look like a bundle of roses. (laughs) Nathan, how you been? Also, what's going on with you? I've been good. I've been good. Speaking of vaccines. I've been Nathan, this is the first time I talked to you without your red are Vaccine hesitant. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Is it really? <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, way. Probably. I probably. cut. I cut. I cut my hair on uh, New Year's. Yeah, that's some time ago. Man, holy crap! Has it been eight before. months since we spoke? On no. video, on video, probably. On that's video, right. maybe. Yeah, because I've called on you. On video, before. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm never early. I'm. I'm never up this early in the morning on a Sunday, so I figured like it just happened today. So nice. I just figured I'd uh, hop on and give you a call. And Nathan, I got my my uh, street epistemology mug here, ready to okay. go. With okay. 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 Coffee you survey. Or? Is there a survey yeah. nearby you? I mean, there, it as, as it so happens, there is a survey nearby me. There I know, is. I know how much you love, I know how much you love that survey. <laughs> Tell now, me about your shirt. Is your first time on our show? No, he's been on the show. Uh, no, time. I've. Yeah, we're, though we're, it was during, it was in 2020 around this. Uh, oh, about a year ago. Yeah. Around this time, oh, I think okay. like when the pandemic first happened was my first time on this mm. show when the lockdowns were first oh, starting to happen. Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe it was the dreadlocks thing you? threw me off. George yeah, Brown yeah, has a question. It. George Brown has a question. You? Yeah, where are you, Nathan? I haven't seen you before. I'm in Portland, Oregon, and I know Tyrone, uh, for anyone that's listening, um, through street epistemology and YouTube. We both have uh, YouTube channels, and he helped me on, in my early days of yeah. my YouTube channel so I can figure out how to like get started and crank out content and do interviews cool. and stuff like that. Why don't you give that a plug? Give that a plug. Where are you from? What's your channel? Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot to mention what it's called. <laughs> uh, Abstract Activist is the name of the YouTube channel. I remember um, mm-hmm. And the name was uh, partly inspired, well, for a lot of different reasons, but one of the reasons was there's a survey that you can use to help people examine their epistemology without the need of um, bringing up a defensive topic right. that would... Uh, make it really difficult. Um, be, a lot of people cling to the belief and they start to identify with their beliefs. And if we talk about their epistemology, it may have an impact on their belief, even though you're not talking about it directly. Mm-hmm. And that would be the abstract idea. You examine the, the method by the which they reach their beliefs is what you're talking about, right? Right. It's just 24 statements that are claims about how we form our, our views, how we form our beliefs. This is and a so great... if we just make it about that, go ahead. This is a great way to segue into the actual topic of the show because I want to talk about right. the reasonability of a monotheistic mindset. So like people who believe in just one God, Christians are a monotheist. So don't take that as a bad word if you're a Christian listening. It's like, oh, I'm not a monotheist, I'm a Christian. It's like, they're the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. You're, you're well, kind of maybe. <laughs> kinda, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's always wiggle room because there's always going to be wiggle room. It's in there by design. But for the most part, it's a monotheistic God. You got one God in charge of everything and you can maybe take you know, different forms or whatever, but it's still him in charge. And so the idea is from a monotheist point of view is God or whatever that titular God name is, has absolute power over its creation, right? And the idea of absolute power is an interesting concept, particularly when you have God who, or people who are made in the image of God, because we can see in almost every case in human history, when a human being has had absolute power, it tends to not end very well for everybody else. And if that's the case, wouldn't we see a similar concept with a supernatural God? And it tends to be the case 
that that is how it is. Even in the Bible, we have a very callous, sometimes, you know, violent and, you know, p- p- t- uh, explicitly jealous God that does not mm-hmm. want anyone else to be more powerful than him and is willing to throw people into a, a punishing dimension with, you know, hell flames and grinding a teeth for all of eternity just for not worshiping him. Like, that's nuts. <laughs> or not believing him. Yeah, just for not, not believing believe- in him is good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being born in Yeah, the like the ultimate gaslighting. Oh, it's the worst thing. So I was telling that to my friend who was Hindu and we had a Hindu ex Hindu on the show yesterday, Nathan. And he's like, yeah, you know, what's crazy is be when I was a Hindu, that's what she was telling me before. Oh, cool. It made no sense that monotheism awesome. could be real because polytheism makes so much more sense because now you have a structured mm-hmm. work format. You have all these people, they take a little bit of the power and deal with it. And if there's fighting, it's typically in fighting among all the different gods. And I'm like, I kind of almost like this idea. Larry, what do you think? Well, yeah, it does make more sense because if, if something goes wrong, you can say, well, it's because this other God interfered. You know, it was <laughs> this God's domain. This, that other God over there was uh, uh, jealous of this God over here. So he it kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense where if one God is in charge of everything and then things go wrong in, in the world, then you, know, you have to say that's a contradiction. Right. If he's a loving God, how come he allowed plenty of thousand people to die in this earthquake? Yes, you know? exactly. Like, why does it's not just necessary evil that's a problem anymore it's like you are all powerful yet you're letting demons and devils purposely hurt people what is going on here uh it looks like you want to add something what's up yeah well i was going to say that um actually in the islam and and christianity are built in uh elements of polytheism um Mm -hmm. because of the angels and in islam the jinn and the jan um, so it is, I mean, a lot more, it's top heavy because the, the, <laughs> the weight of the omnipotence is, is up there on the one guy, but, yeah. um, there are elements of polytheism throughout a trait. So like even uh, the mother Mary, you know, uh, Virgin Mary, you know, is, is worshiped, uh, in some cultures more than, uh, even Jesus is, you know, I'd love to take this idea around the table. Nathan, do you think uh, Christianity has polytheistic components to it? And would you like to speak to that? I think there's uh, many arguments. I mean, I've, I'm no expert, though I've talked to people who are experts. Um, not like that's a great way to form my own views. <laughs> really, maybe. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean... I would imagine that it has roots that from previous religions in the same region of the world that believed in multiple different gods and lots of different ideas have been adopted and gathered and remixed just like an author writes any book really, you know, they research and read and then they write stuff. I hear it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I also feel like a lot of the idea of paganism was just people who aren't Christians, right? And a lot of pagans tend to believe in multiple different gods. And that tends to residually carry over to Christianity days of the weeks named after different gods. It's kind of weird. Like, you know, God made right. Thor- Thursday. God. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Saturday, Thursday. Saturday, uh, the Sunday, <laughs> the moon day. It's kind of crazy. But, um, you know, you look at even Christmas and there's just so many different influences there from non Christian belief systems. John, what do you think? Oh, Absolutely. Well, the yeah, pagans well, would dig a tree up and then they'd bring it inside. <laughs> I've got a theory. I've got a theory about how this evolved, because the the earlier societies they had lots of gods, mm. each with a specific responsibility. You know, this one for rain, that one for the crops failure, right. this yeah. one for the health, and so on. But I've got a theory that says that suggests that they gradually sort of merged and. They would take over bids and so on because it's in the interest of the priests, the earthly representatives, to only have one God. Because look at it from this point of view. If you've got, if you've got to sell a specific power, you know, mm-hmm. you're knocking on somebody's door and it, you're like the vacuum cleaner man, you know? Yeah. And yeah. You can say you can say this will clean your floors, but also with this attachment, it will clean. <laughs> you know. It, it was oh, it's like a one. It, and with this attachment, it will dry your hair and all, all that sort of thing. So exactly, when you get every power under the auspices of a single god, 
you've got a better product, haven't mm. you? You'd, wouldn't you rather be selling your skill to influence a God that is all-powerful rather than one that's just got a little niche of suitability? It's I a bigger market. No, I totally hear what you're saying. Like, why sell the Justice League when you can just have Superman, basically? Right? Exactly. It's a, it's a bigger mm -hmm. market, and therefore, monotheism is a better business. And yet, Superman movies make no money. We've tried this year after year after year. We know for a fact they don't. Everybody wants the Spider-Man. <clears throat> Everyone wants the Iron Man. Because he's on only here? got one weakness. Is, uh, I, you know what? For an interesting plot, really. It, it's actually even not a weakness. It's like he has magic as his weakness. We, we'll, we'll talk about this, Nathan, for sure. George Brown, yeah, yeah. The, the second and a half. Please take yourself off mute. I want to hear what you're thinking about the idea of, you know, I kind of think of Christianity is like how an organization, a company's ran. And there are a lot of different kinds of companies. There's sometimes companies that have just one guy who's the whole seller of the show. He's the CEO. He makes the, everything on the assembly line. It's a one-man show. And then you have other companies where you have tiers of organizations, CEOs, you know, staff leaders, managers, HR department, all that stuff. In my head, those tend to be more organized and better ran companies, right? And in my head, that's kind of like what polytheism is. Yeah, it's not as powerful as the one guy who rules them all, but they're a lot more, in my head, capable because they know how to macromanage what they're good at. What do you think is a personal advantage? Do you think polytheism has advantages over monotheism or the other way around? I'd love to hear what you think. Well, well definitely. Uh, polytheism is simply more fun. There are more <laughs> characters in this opera. I mean, imagine yeah. an opera that had one character who was yeah. Donald Trump. Oh my gosh! There you go. <laughs> okay, that's going to happen soon. Now, and, and, but, but what what came to my mind was some of the founding cities of America, um, and I'm saying the United States here. Dread, dread pirate! I'm sorry. I, um, All good. You know, we had cities that were founded on a religious basis, and, and like I see Boston as being sort of a, a symbiosis of the pilgrims and the puritans the the pilgrims were to the southwest and the puritans were to the northeast and it sort of has this um puritanical kind of religious founding hmm. and philadelphia was the quakers well new york was not new york was strictly a business deal it was you know it was a business colony of the dutch and, and the fellow who ran it, the governor, Peter Stuyvesant, was a middle corporate manager, mm. you know? <laughs> and um, and it's, so as far as belief systems, in New York City was like a free-for-all. People, people came and hung out, people with all different kinds of backgrounds, and it became a melting pot. And so that's where I grew up. Uh, a couple hundred years later, it was still... Uh, it still had that patina to it. And it's was, it was a lot of fun, a lot of diversity. Diversity. And I, I really enjoy that diversity. Yeah, everybody. And, and, I, and I think, you know, people say, make America great again. Well, well, America, yeah, America has a greatness, but that greatness is the diversity of our people, mm. all the differences between us. So you're saying even politics can benefit from that because there's a diversity of perspectives and thoughts and beliefs, even in a pantheon of gods. Oh, yeah. You don't necessarily have with a monotheistic point of view. I'm almost being yes, sold on polytheism right now. Like, obviously, there's problems, right? Like, you know, it's the same issue as believing in one God. It's the same core issues. Like, hey, you know, if you're going to let one God through, why not, why not let them all through, right? And the idea is, how do I put this? If you're going to have a basis to believe in any God, have that first, and then at that point, I don't care what the number is. Because once you prove that one God exists, right. then I'll be like, all right, I'm fine. You proved at least that it's feasible and it's an option. It seems more likely in my head than that there would be more. And who knows? This first one that you just discovered could just be one of several many. So like, oh my gosh, Nathan, I'm about to say something that's going to sound crazy to you. And I want to hear it. That, like, like, yeah, as, can I say it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, as, as, as soon as someone like, proves that a God exists, my immediate reaction will be like, there has to be more gods. <laughs> Here's a more interesting uh, epistemological kind of question, which is yeah. like, how much should we allow an argument alone 
with no evidence whatsoever to raise our confidence in anything. In uh, like, anything? So imagine all you have is an argument and you have absolutely no evidence attached at all. So I see you raising your hand. That would be a big fat yeah. zero. Uh, <laughs> there's some things that are so right. mundane that I'll accept them even on an argumentation basis. But Dred, what do you think? Well, Hitchens okay. razor, that which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Yeah, like that's a good one. Numbers, math, like you can just claim something is four and define it very well. And I'll be like, okay, that's four. I'm fine with that. Four minus four equals zero. I'm fine with that. Larry, what do you got? You got your hand raised. Oh, so, and some claims like John was saying, you know, just say, yeah, sure, fine. Who cares? Yeah. You know, like if, if somebody comes to you with a claim like uh, I have a, a, a cat, I, bought, I just bought a cat. A cat. Well, that's a claim. Doesn't have anything supernatural involved with it. It's yep. something that happens every day. We know mm -hmm. what a cat is. Doesn't so cost us anything to believe it. And which is one of the main things about religion is they, as soon as you start believing their stuff, they start right. making demands of you, yeah. either money or time or a commitment or whatever. Mm -hmm. And my basis is only extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So like the, right. if you have an incredibly mundane claim, I'm willing to believe it. Even if you just state it, like, I am talking to you right now. It's like, yeah, I believe that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or it's something like mm -hmm. that. Like right. I have hair on my body. I'm like, okay, probably you're talking to me. You're probably a mammal. I'm willing to believe. I don't need to work too hard for stuff like that. But if you tell me a God exists, now we have like, how extraordinary is that God? The most extraordinary thing ever. Well, now you need the most extraordinary standard of evidence for me to meet that. John, do you think that's fair? I, I have a cat isn't an argument it's just an assertion isn't right. it right yeah i would believe that on an assertion basis if someone told me they had a cat because i don't care i have a cat too. And, uh, unless it's schrodinger's cat of course <laughs> sure 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 if yeah. they told me they had a tiger then i'd be like that's more of an extraordinary claim i don't believe you please present some evidence because i don't believe you have a tiger but, even if you show me if, pictures but if somebody's making a claim for something that they also claim is immaterial then, then there's no argument that's going to be persuasive. Right. And that is the point that I want a lot of Christians to know that like a book that claims that a God exists is not the same thing as a newspaper that said that uh, a guy named Columbus, Christopher Columbus existed, you know, several hundred years ago. Like it's completely different standards of claims that are being made. And you have to measure our ability to believe based on the standard of evidence, based on how extraordinary the claim is. It's nuanced, but it's the most important thing you can do in this lifetime, I think. Being able mm -hmm. to parse truth things from false things. We're getting close to the end of the half hour. Larry, what do you got? I was just going to say that uh, he made a point that it wasn't that I was just making a claim, not an argument. But a lot of the, the arguments given by Christians and other religious people are based on unmentioned claims. Like uh, they could make an argument, you know, you, you better believe because if you don't believe, you're going to go to hell after after you die. Well, the un, unmentioned claim is that you have a soul. And that right. your soul lives forever and that it I has places to go after you die. Yeah. You know, things then, like that. Yeah. 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 Those There's are so many implied claims. things. It's mm -hmm. yeah. so disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll go ahead and t take us to the break. We well, got to uh, take is, the break. Yeah. Oh. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP <clears> FM, <throat> right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio. Maxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, August 15th, 2021. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. We have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID. And if, uh, if you've got vaccinated and you're willing to get out in person, we are having in-person meetings again. They're at the Barley's Taproom Pizzeria in the Old City in Knoxville, Tennessee, out on the patio. And they're every Tuesday night starting around 5.30 and we go to about 8 o'clock. Uh, you can find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to knoxvilleatheist.org. You can also Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and start a group uh, for atheists in your area. Don't find one? You can stop one. one. That's right. Uh, what are we, where do we want to pick up there, Wombat? 
So we just had a really fun conversation on the nature of polytheism versus monotheism. Good points for polytheism today. <laughs> you still got just as much work to do as the monotheist, though. But uh, I wanted to come back in the second half and talk about a survey that Nathan brought up, uh, especially the one that was dealing with COVID. Nathan, would you mind doing an intro on that? Uh, yeah. So so which one do you want me to talk about? The SE the survey The third first? link. The third link. The third link that you posted. The one that was talking about... Um, uh, convincing Americans to get the COVID-19 vaccines based on how they approach their faith and like based on like what religion and how affiliated they are with that religion, what is their likely uh, hesitancy or degree of refusal based on um, capita per capita? Well, yeah, I just, um, so just to be perfectly clear, I didn't do like a, a lot of research before I uh, sent that one off. I just happened to think, <laughs> yeah, right. And, and honestly, that is kind of a problem in our society. We're all kind of sending articles too soon before we, uh... I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's time magazine. All right, let's take a look here. But, um, there's a vaccine hesitancy that you can measure based on, uh, uh religious affiliation. And so essentially I was sending you just this idea that there seems to be a correlation between your epistemology in one, in one way and your decisions on whether or not you're going to take a vaccine on the, on the other. Correct. And that's pretty much. So what I did like about, so what Nathan was kind enough to do before the show was post an article that he did not read <laughs> about. I read some um, of it. What's the degree of COVID hesitancy based on people who are affiliated with churches? And what I found was actually kind of interesting, because if you were to ask me, hey, here's a guy who goes to a church on a regular basis with a giant mass of people, how likely is he to accept a COVID vaccine or be hesitant about it or absolutely refuse it? And I think here are the three points, accept, hesitant, or absolute refuse. I would say almost just based on the impression that I got as a guy here in Tennessee, that it would almost be around you know 70% people who would not want to get vaccinated if they go to a big church, because I don't know, in my head, I just felt like that was the impression. But what I'm seeing here is that, you know, among white Catholics, black Protestants, white evangelical Protestants, Hispanic Catholics, a whole bunch of different margins here. Um, the majority in almost every single case are likely to accept the vaccine or at least are hesitant, but doesn't necessarily mean that they won't get the vaccine. And I would find that to be a very relieving uh, data point, because it seems then that the greater, the greater trend would be people are getting vaccinated as a result based on their inclination of going to church. It's like, Hey, if I'm going to go to church, I at least want to be vaccinated. And I'm like, I'm happy to hear that. And the people who are absolutely refusing are without a doubt in the minority in all these groups, which isn't fantastic, but at least it's not the majority. And I'm actually happy to see that. Uh, Nathan thoughts. Yeah, so my real reason for wanting to bring this up is because I think that SE is a powerful tool to talk to our friends and family about uh, vaccine hesitancy. If you know somebody who's vaccine hesitant, ask them why. What's their biggest reason for not uh, wanting to take the vaccine? Uh, listen to them and what they have to say. Be sincerely interested in what they have to say about this issue. If you care about what they think, if you care about their decisions and their behavior, and I've had several SE talks in the last couple of weeks with people I know who are vaccine hesitant. Um, and they, we hear each other out and we're opening up a dialogue. And I think it's ex extremely important that we engage with people in this important time about this very important issue. If you're already talking with people, your religious friends and family, uh, you might as well bring this up too, as like another thing to talk about. Yep. And that's the real reason why I sent you this article today is I just found that there uh, both, uh, both issues are important and both issues are fun and worth talking about. What have you found if you had this conversation with other people to be the root cause of why people aren't getting vaccines, Nathan? Uh, inconvenience. inconvenience. That's really like the main thing though. Wow. Inconvenience. That's like the number one answer I get. Although wow. I get it in a lot more words than that. Yeah, it's I wonder, usually like a run on sentence for a paragraph. Like I just don't have the time or I'm, I'm going to be fine or it doesn't really matter to me or, you know, I'm not worried about it or it's just, you know, it, it wasn't available. If it was there, I'd take it. That's usually what I hear. Like if, if it was easy, I'd do it. 
but since it's hard, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go out of my way to do something that's difficult. The, there's lots of other reasons, of course. People will say like you know uh, it's you know they'll they'll have the preconceived notion about how vaccines are not natural. Usually, it's a naturalistic fallacy that I'm uh-huh. hearing. Sure. Like my body is strong enough; it can handle it on its own. Right. Or they'll give like the George Carlin thing, and they'll say, "Back in my day, we swam in raw sewage, and it made your, you know, immune system stronger because we did that." You know, I'm gonna expose myself to all these germs, and that's what's gonna make my immune system good in the long run. Uh, so those types of arguments are things that I often hear, though they're not based on evidence. Right. And that again is the You're same saying... issue as before. Yeah. They're often famous last words too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, there's, you know, the fallacy is, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. No, that's, that's not the way it works. It yeah. makes you weaker. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you trauma. And right. broken bones. It's not you, good. Uh, I would have, uh, it would have been interesting to see, um, a data point for the irreligious. And, yes. You know, how that, how that stands up to how that these, would compare, how it would compare. Exactly. Very good. Right. point. Very good. I'd point. be interested in that. Down. No, what about age, that. age range? Yes. The age range. What about age range? Yeah. Clearly they didn't do. Yeah. I mean, there's such a thing as black Catholics and, uh, <laughs> yeah. but they and clearly didn't talk to everybody. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It only looks like they talked to like, you know, one, two, three, four, five different churches, but yeah. it was enough for them to make a published article on time. Like this isn't hard hitting research. This is time magazine. Guys. Yes, of course. Yeah. Right, right, right. The BBC focused on this earlier this week, having sent their USA correspondent to Louisiana. Oh. where he interviewed a, uh, a pastor who claimed he was... He questioned him as to whether why they weren't taking up the vaccines, and the pastor said that he doesn't think they will actually protect people because that's what the politicians say, and he doesn't believe politicians, sort of on principle, Sure. And he also said, well, well, they look at the hospital information and then unvaccinated are getting hospitalized and dying more. And the pastor said, well, that's that's come from, you know, financial lies because they want to drum up more business in the hospitals. So you, you just can't win against these people. And I, I want to do a plug here and tell you that sure. you can watch that BBC interview on my Global Atheist News show on my channel called Free Thought Productions. I'd like to make a point because, John, you have this really interesting history in England where a lot of the scares that happened about vaccines, this is even before COVID, like the whole vaccines cause autism scare that happened was caused by an Englishman, but yeah. here's the interesting thing. An Englishman basically had his own vaccine and there was a popular vaccine that came out and he's like, please don't use that guy's vaccine, use mine because you can pay me money yes. and I yes. like money. Yes. Wouldn't that work? Yes. Okay, well, his vaccine causes autism. It wasn't true, but he yes. said it anyway, just so people would be scared to hopefully go to his. But instead, yes. those people decided no vaccines whatsoever because mm-hmm. they were just terrified of it as a, on the concept. And you're, you're talking about Wakefield, well, right? Yes. That's yes. right. Yeah. And that was Andrew, the Andrew Wakefield. Who is and now that, being defrocked? He's no longer. A, oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, this this story has a happy ending and then a sad ending for America. But <laughs> but basically, everyone's afraid of vaccines until a very brave uh, English reporter basically broke the story, did a very detailed analysis, and people listened in England. They were like, "Whoa, this guy's a fraud. Vaccines are good for you." I'm going to get vaccinated. And the amount of people who went vaccinated went from high to low because they were scared to immediately back high once that report yeah. went out. And that guy got so defrauded that he went to yeah. America to basically <laughs> spin the same lies. And now it's, we it's, are going through that as a country where there are people it. who are like, I'm afraid of getting vaccinated. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I, my cause of autism. I heard there's mercury in there. Jim Carrey was afraid of him. I'm not getting vaccinated. Jim Carrey's not getting vaccinated. <laughs> it's the same thing, unfortunately. And what's even thank worse you. is the guy's still kicking around and going to conspiracy yeah. meetings. and yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Thank, you. thank you for taking him. We send all our renegades to you. It started with the Pilgrim Fathers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't should, just, we should just lodge them in Roswell. Yeah, George, what do you got? Don't forget the memory chips. The memory chips that are in the vaccine. Yes, there's memory chips. Yes, so I I need some of those. You mean Bill Gates location (laughs) trackers? You're not the only one. So you mean one of these? 
yeah 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 it's like yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah like we need anything like they need any more right. data on us <laughs> right so what i found to be the core good, fear for good pump, radio larry yeah what oh, i what? found to be the core fear. <laughs> good radio showing us your phone <laughs> guys oh guys, yeah <laughs> what i found to be the core fear for vaccines at least from a conversation that i've had tend to be uh fear and ignorance, uh, fear in the aspect of the unknown of what will happen if I take this, but ignorance in the sense of, I feel more strong without knowing the repercussions of what would happen if I don't take this vaccine or the rates of people dying. I just feel more confident that I'll survive if I'm oblivious to the right. facts of the world. Yeah. And by mm. taking a vaccine, I'm admitting that I am weak and that there are things about me that I can't do. Right. I don't like that feeling. And so I don't want yeah. to, I'll pretend. That, yeah. That's that the ostrich. That that's the ostrich syndrome, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Poke your head well, in the Same thing with climate change. Yep. George Brown, Absolutely. see ya. What's up? Yeah. And, and, and of course, what I hear around here a lot is I heard it on Facebook. I heard <laughs> it on Facebook. Larry, yeah. this is why we need you. <laughs> Larry, you're on mute, my friend. You're on mute. Oh, that I re that I researched it on H on um, Facebook, yeah, or yeah, yeah, researched yeah. it on YouTube. Yeah, whoever so, said that ignorance is bliss? He's got a lot to answer for. He's probably dead too. Yeah, that person's probably dead. <laughs> so, so you run into what I imagine is the real the real wall, which is an inconvenience wall, right? It's essentially how can I get around my own ego to admit that I'm not as strong as I am, as, strong, as smart as I want to be, or as healthy as I could be to, in the mm -hmm. face of what is obviously an apparent and objective threat to my well-being. And you could ignore it and feel satisfied, but only that's temporary. And I just lost a family member to COVID. So like, I know for yeah. a fact that that's not yeah. good in the long term. So mm -hmm. yes, George Brown, you're right. CDC does change its recommendations, but the overall tenor stays the same. Like they may say, wash your hand three times a day, wash your hand five times a day, wash your hands one time a day, two times a day, wash your hands, period, right? They may say, hey, you can wear a mask, you can wear a face cover, you can wear a cloth mask. It doesn't have to be an N95. Okay, maybe an N95 is good. K95 is just, wear a face mask. Like get vaccinated <laughs> is the main thing they're saying. Uh, wash your hands, stay away from people who are sick. If you are sick yourself, Stay home, take it on yourself. And yes, if you are vaccinated, it does not mean that you won't get sick. It just means that your symptoms will not be as severe and your likelihood of being able to stay alive or better, which puts less pressure on hospitals and, and your family, but you can still be a vector for disease. And um, if it's any indication, so like in sign language, I know this is bad for radio, but sign language, you do coronavirus like this and then infection as it's spreading out, right? So like the COVID pan uh, pandemic happens from everybody, vaccinated or not vaccinated. So the whole idea is the more we get vaccinated, the more we'll be resistant to it as a group. We have this cure, we should use it. And I can respect, I can totally respect if you, if you decide not to get vaccinated, right? But I just want to let you know that it's the wrong decision, right? And so I think that matters, and I think that should just be heard. Uh, can I just say that not only can you still get infected if you've had the vaccine, but and and still infect others by being a host, but you, when you host a virus, you're giving it an opportunity to mutate. Yes. Yes. Make it worse for everybody else. When you host it unvaccinated, especially, yeah, because then it has all the ample time to mutate and, and figure out what works, what doesn't work, and make new carboxylic groups on, yeah. on stuff. So yeah. your decision affects the rest of the planet. Yeah, yeah. And if you've already been vaccinated and you feel like your job is done, I mean, my I would like to ask people around me that if you know anything about critical thinking, you've got some skills, Maybe you've watched Tyrone's Let's Chat a bunch, and now you know S S E or his brand of it. Go out there and talk with people. You know, be a part of your community and help help uh, start a discussion about this. Yeah, because um, there are so many people that way, still uh, haven't taken it, even though it's free. <laughs> I'd also say, uh, be willing to speak up to, cause you know, it's the ignorant voices that speak the loudest. George Brown, I hear you want to say right. something. You mind taking yourself off mute? Yes, uh, for our listeners and viewers, I want to mention that we've been throwing around the term SE without defining it. So it means street epistemology. Yep. 
or Socratic examination. Same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Same, same uh, difference. Just watch some YouTube videos, get your own brain a bit. Yeah. Basically. Just ask people what, why, how they know what they know. Yeah, yeah. basically. Uh, George, uh, uh, okay. Dread Pirate Higgs, I wanted to get your feedback on the idea of vaccination. How is it in Canada? Last time we checked, it was really hard to get vaccinated up there. Have things gone any better? You're on mute, my friend. You're on mute, my friend. Still mute. Holy Lunuli Lord, please give this man a voice. It, it worked. Raw it worked. Man. Yeah. Raw man. Raw man. Um, <laughs> Your prayers were answered. I, um, I, I think it, I think it's still uh, rather hard. Um, I know my mother who um, uh, she hasn't received her sec second vaccination, and she's uh, seventy five. Yeah. Um, so con certainly consider a vulnerable uh, adult. Um, every once in a while, they have these little they have pop up uh, clinics uh, in various towns. It just kind of move, moves around. Um, so people who can't find the time off, I guess, you know, they, they can just take advantage of the opportunity to go get vaccinated. But, um, I think it's a slow and steady this is how yeah. it's going in Canada. I also want to throw out one last thing too, for the people who do get vaccinated, or people who do love science or are critical thinkers, but are afraid of the vaccine because it'll make them sick. Like two things. One, it's not guaranteed that you'll feel ill. I've taken vaccines and I'm not feel ill afterwards. But the second thing is the immuno response is what you kind of want out of the experience, because that's showing your, it's letting your body know, Hey, right. you just put something in me that shouldn't be in me. Let me make you have a fever. Let me make you sit down a little bit by making you feel lethargic and just rest it out while I figure this thing out. And I know that's your body taking it over. You're not getting sick from the disease. You're basically, um, depending on the virus that you take, like the one that's for COVID, gives your body instructions to make the outer shell of the coronavirus without the inner shell. And so it just looks like it's the virus, but it's something your body is making out of its own body parts to make it look like a virus that they can use as target practice. And they'll make you, they'll make you feel sick, but you're not actually sick with the COVID mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. disease. It's so putting your body to school. Yeah. You'll never get COVID-19 from a COVID vaccine, basically. Right. You'll just have an immuno response. It'll be a short period of time and you'll be good again. You'll have all these antibodies. that will be able to help you when, if yep. you do get infected. Looks you like, uh, we'll have to get boosters too, eh? <laughs> oh yeah. We're, we're going to be doing this for the long haul. Yeah. Uh, this is not and, a short term. And it's going to, no. it's not. Yeah. We got to get used to this. And this is another reason why I'm like, we got to start being less passive, like right. getting out there, being more engaged with people in a polite yeah. way, in a respectful way. Um, and, and start a dialogue. Larry, what's up? All right. Well, we'll have to get updated shots for COVID for the same reason we have to get updated shots for the flu every yep. year. Yeah. Exactly. Or, or, changes for, or every six yeah. years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, they're it's just going to get more effective though. I think too, I think so. They're right. going to get more effective. They're going to get better. They're going to have more research back behind them, more evidence behind Science them. Works. And that's going to make our job a little easier. You know, mm -hmm. George, look, it's like, I have a, however, something. all right. I have, I have a, sure. however, really. yep. let's hear it. And that is that uh, last week, right here in Tennessee, um, members of a school board were threatened by people who came to the school meeting, um, if they dared to try to impose a mask mandate on children on the school buses. How do we overcome this kind of mindset that is telling us, um, for instance, uh, masks are optional. You wear your mask if you want to, which is something like saying that this girl is a little bit pregnant <laughs> i would say if you have a private school do whatever you want but if you have a federally funded public school you follow the federally funded mandates and if you don't like yep. it take your kid to public well, well what do you mean school. you what, what do you mean there you, you go face? <laughs> slam dunk if you don't like it take your kid to a private so school so how do we mandate. do this yeah period you know uh, i mean there there are a lot of people who Make the mandate. I see walking if you around. don't like it, take your kid to private school or homeschool. You, you certainly have the right to do that, but you do not have the right to put teachers but in we got, a public school. Period. We have people at the governmental level, the yeah. po politicians, who are opposing 
the mandates. They're opposing it and getting who are legislating well against too. them. Right, right. There's like, hey, I'm going to get vaccinated and then tell other so, people that they don't have to, which is fine. So seriously, I mean, the, ma the mandate just we, like we have know. some very <clears throat> substantial opposition. So we're running almost out of time, but the mandate is that if you're a federal employee, that you need to get vaccinated, period. And that is what everyone in Senate has been done. What they say afterwards is free speech, and they can say and sell whatever they want, but they have been vaccinated in order to be in that building. They can make the mandate for federal for federal employees as well as federal organizations, and that includes mm -hmm. federally funded public schools. And if you don't like it, take your kid to private school. That's, that's the basic rule behind it. You can't take your kid to school if he's not uh treated to uh was it tuberculosis tetanus uh a whole bunch of stuff like those rules already exist we're yeah. not changing anything with covid guys we're at the end of the show nathan where can we find your stuff at uh my youtube channel is abstract activists uh on youtube and i'm occasionally on uh se podcast as well so street epistemology right. podcast you can find me there sometimes um yeah that's it very, very cool. Full cool. Act, Abstract Activist on YouTube. Abstract Activist or on Twitter at Abstract underscore SE. And I recommend it because Nathan has some really, he probably has the best video production of any of the people who do SE videos. So I got to be honest with you. It's really, really well done. Also nice, very, very eclectic much. group over in Oregon. So it's not just, you know, very much <laughs> in te Texas or Tennessee. It's like you see people who are like into some bizarre things. Good show. I highly recommend it. John Richards, you got so many different places. Where can we find you? Yeah, my channel is called Free Thought Productions. And I've got a confession to make because I set up to have Howard Berman, who is the current president of the Atheist Alliance International, on my Free Thought Hour last night. Hmm. But he wasn't able to turn up because a tree fell down near where he lives in Northern California and deprived him of power and internet connection. Hmm. I, is that a God thing or a karma <laughs> yeah. thing? What's going on here? I don't know. But Where's the punchline, John? I need the punchline. <clears throat> what we mustn't do is let the Templeton Foundation discover that we were able to unmute Dred's microphone with prayer. <laughs> there <we go>. yes. <laughs> free thought no oh, that's what they pay good money for right there <laughs> yeah, exactly john the name mm -hmm. of your channel one last time for our listeners free thought what free thought productions free thought productions nice dread pirate where can we find your stuff at well i'm uh, on youtube at mind pirate and that's m-i-n-d-p-y-r-a-t-e and i live stream this show uh when i'm able uh, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm looking to actually do some more content as well. So maybe uh, maybe uh, Ty will give me a hand with that too. Let me know. Let me know. I'm always available. George Brown, unless I'm playing disc golf. George Brown, I need some coffee, but I heard there was a really good one out there named <laughs> Eats Coffee, Feets Coffee. Is that is that the name of the coffee? What are we talking about? Oh, yes. Yeah. Pete's coffee. Pete's well, coffee. Pete's uh, certainly the best. Pete. Pete said that America. I'm sorry. Alfred Pete said that Americans drink lousy coffee, mm. and he came here from the uh, from Holland indirectly to prove otherwise. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, very cool. Vacuum sealed. It's very Holland. expensive. It's very expensive stuff. Very expensive. Yes. Most. But I'm best. not drinking it today. What you got? This, this is time? called. Um, this is called Pilon, and it's very affordable. Okay, not bad, not bad. Larry, um, I hope you can see that I am ready to learn everything I can possible about atheism and what it's all about. But I have no manuscript to help guide me in this process. What can you do to help me out, my friend? Well, I do have a book. I don't know if it has everything in the world that's possible to learn about atheism, but it does have a lot of good information. And it's called Atheism. What's it all about? It's available on Amazon. You mean this book? Oh, you got oh, that book. That's right. And that fact, that that's, book. That's, that's my like daughter on the cover there. Yeah. Um, it's actually my a own, reader. You'll get through it. I guarantee yeah, you. Yeah. My own content is found. A lot of the articles in that book, too, are also found on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and articles on the subject. Uh, my YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. 
And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it and enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye man. everybody. Bye, bye. Everybody. So I heard a voice in my head that told me atheism was true. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>